My friends at Easy Cater are workplace catering pros, helping you find food for everything from daily employee meals to staff meetings and special events. Visit easycater.com slash leader assistant to find out more. The Leader Assistant Podcast exists to encourage and challenge assistants to become confident, game-changing leader assistants. Hey, Leader Assistants, it's episode 128, and today's Ask Me Anything episode is going to start off with a question from Missy C. Missy says, do you ever suffer from imposter syndrome? I feel like I have so much to offer my fellow admins where I work, but then I think, who am I to think I know more than they do? It's a personal struggle for me. Missy, yes, I think we all struggle with imposter syndrome to some extent. Um, But yeah, I mean, who am I to think I could have a podcast every week that helps assistants? Who am I to think that I could write a book for assistants that's a guide for being an assistant. Um, those are the things that I've thought um, hundreds of times over the last couple of years. Um, and, you know, I think that the key to remember is every one of us has different, unique experience. Every, every one of us has a unique perspective on life and on this role, uh, the executive assistant, administrative professional role. And every one of us um, is suffering from imposter syndrome uh, to an extent. And so if you remember that, then you realize, okay, well, I'm not the only one feeling this. And if everyone were to not speak up and not share their story and not give their advice and their opinion on things and how um, they think we could work better, then no one would get anywhere. (laughs) Um, So, but one of the best things I'll also say about this is if you can remember that things that to you seem ordinary, maybe it's certain aspects of your job or things that you do in your role that, that make you a better assistant, things that might seem ordinary to you will seem extraordinary to someone else. It will just blow their mind because they've never thought of it that way or they've never um, done things that way. And so they just they just don't know. And so that I would just uh, remember that. And that helps me um, keep sharing uh, my thoughts and do an episode of the podcast every week for almost two years straight. Um, Or actually, it might have been two years straight now. I think I skipped one holiday in there somewhere. Um. So yeah, I think that uh, just remember that we're all struggling with it, um, but we also all have something to contribute, and so speak up. But yes, great question, definitely a challenge. Uh, Katie T. asks, have you ever reached a place when you wanted to leave a company or are feeling unfulfilled, and how have you dealt with that? What conversations have you had? Yeah, so I talk about this in my book, um, a little bit about my story when I was an executive assistant in my prior role, I was burning out and I was just like not very excited about the company, but I was, I still felt a calling, if you will, to support my executive and his family, but I was burning out. And so I had a conversation. I said, listen, I am not going to be able to keep doing things the way we're doing them. Um, it, we're just working too much. Um, I'm, I'm unfulfilled and we just, just put it out on the table and tried to work through it. And then unfortunately a few months later, he ended up getting fired. So we didn't end up getting to get into it too much, but I think that it's okay to want to leave a company. It's okay to feel unfulfilled. Um, but really try to get to the root of why. Um, and I, and I talk about that as well, um, in the leader assistant book, where I talk about the mismatch, different types of um, reasons and stressors that could be driving you to burnout, and company value mismatch, executive mismatch, um, are a couple of them, but you can dig in deeper um, in that book. Let's see, I think it's chapter... 
24. Should be chapter 24. All right. Aaron D asks, what was the transition like working for going from working within a church or a nonprofit environment and then transitioning to the corporate world? I'm really interested to hear the positives you experienced and the challenges you faced, etc. Great question, Aaron. So for those of you who don't know, I worked in a nonprofit church for 12 years, and then I transitioned to a for-profit artificial intelligence software as a service or SaaS company um, called Capacity. And I had never been in the for-profit world um, as an assistant. And really, I mean, I had been at Walmart um, when I was in high school, but I don't really count that. Um, And yeah, I mean, it's definitely a transition. I would say break it up into the challenges and the positive. The challenges were, um, you know, in a nonprofit, a lot of the times you're doing something that you believe and that your team believes is going to change the world, uh, whether it's a church or whether it's a, you know, feeding the poor um, nonprofit or a nonprofit that helps um, rescue young women out of sex trafficking. Um, A lot of these, you know, or maybe bring water to third world countries that need clean water. Uh, Nonprofits are very big picture, like change the world, like we're in this together. Um, And that can be a positive because everyone's on the same mission and everyone just believes in what you're doing and believes that you're changing the world. And it can be a fun, exciting environment to be in and really feel like you're making an impact on the world. Um, And you know, it's, it's kind of, it's like not about money. It's about helping people. Well, one of the kind of on the flip side, uh, one of the challenges in the the negative parts of that nonprofit world is it usually pays a lot less. Uh, so you have to give up a lot uh, as far as your kind of lifestyle or, um, you know, lit means the means in which you live. And so, you just have to be okay with not making much money. And, and I was for a while. Um, thankfully I was able to pay my bills and, um, you know, God provided to, you know, for my family, but I I was definitely underpaid. I was definitely underpaid, especially the last four years that I was there. Um, and the transition was, was kind of a shocker in a way because it was like, you go from being in a nonprofit where pretty much everyone you work with is, is kind of the same type of people. Uh, they have the same mission, they have the same values, the same beliefs. And then you work in a, in a uh, corporate environment or a for, for profit environment and everyone's different. Everyone's got different beliefs, different values, different, um, you know, worldviews. And that's definitely a change. And I, I actually enjoyed that. I was actually encouraged and excited to be in an environment where not everybody was just like me. Um, I think that's healthy to, to be in that sort of more diverse environment. Um, and then one of the challenges was I had no idea what anything meant when it came to software. Cause I, you know, went to a software company and I'd never done anything with software developing. I never did anything with, you know, revenue numbers and sure we sure we raised money we had capital campaigns and stuff but we didn't have revenue numbers we didn't have like we weren't talking about profit margins we weren't talking about you know equity or um you know raising series a round or series b round and dilution um and all that kind of stuff so uh definitely a challenge to jump into that world, uh, which was new to me. However, I will say if you're thinking about, if you're at a nonprofit or maybe a higher ed, which can be similar to nonprofits, a lot of times underpaid, um, different types of systems. And then you're trying to jump into software or corporate environment. Um, I will say that they're the role of an EA is, is pretty much the same. (laughs) So even though I had that shock of I've never worked in a software company or for profit and all these people are different than me. Um, I was able to, I was confident in my ability to figure things out and I was confident in my EA abilities and they translated very, very well. So don't be afraid to jump ship. If you feel like you're ready to switch one way or the other, your EA skill set and your leader assistant, uh, game changing 
skills will translate um, on both sides. So definitely be encouraged by that if that's what you're thinking about. But good question, Aaron. Good question. All right. Terry D asks, how do you deal with high pressure situations? Really good question. Um, I talk about being steady in the chaos, uh, steady in the storms in the book, chapter four of the leader assistant. You can find that at amazon.leaderassistant.com. Um, there's also a, I think there's a podcast episode, uh, look real quick at my schedule, um, where I talk about being steady. And if not, maybe I'm thinking of the audiobook. to be honest. <laughs> um, so anyway, just look up the book, chapter four, uh, steady chapter. Um, but the, the things I will say here real quick are I take a deep breath and I thrive on high pressure situations. I, I do not like boring environments. I really want there to be some pressure. I really, I really love it when there's a lot of anxiety and a lot of, um, a lot on the line, if you will. And so high pressure situations, bring it on. Um, I think that part of the reason I, I enjoy them is it just, it just gives me a chance to lead when others are kind of freaking out and not able to lead or they're, they're paralyzed by the high pressure situations. Um, and I think why I'm able to do that is because I really don't, I do my best to detach my worth from my work. And so if your entire well-being and meaning in life and worth as a human being is tied to how that high pressure situation turns out, then you're really going to struggle. But if you detach your worth as a human being from that high pressure situation, you'll be able to execute at a high level and really lead others and lead yourself through that situation. Um, So anyway, great question, Terry. I hope that's helpful. Um, Yeah, feel free to reach out if you have follow-up questions. And if you have other questions that you'd like me to answer and and ask me anything formatted uh, episode in the future, email them to podcast at leaderassistant.com. Hopefully those are helpful and I look forward to chatting next week for another episode in the Ask Me Anything series. Talk soon. Please review on Apple Podcasts. GoBullows.com